The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. As our Lord, our God, was tested his people, Israel, on the desert in today's first reading, I'm starting testing your patience today. Now, actually, because this homely will be so long, not as it used to be, okay? I hope you can survive this. <laughs> My beloved, this is last time when I have occasion to talk to you like that. That's why I decided from this place, from my position, telling you something very special from my heart. We all want to meet Jesus, I believe. We want to have a closer friendship with our Lord Jesus. We want, we want to have more of Jesus in our lives. I believe that. And we have to come to the right place, to the Eucharist. The best place to meet Jesus is in the Eucharist. If you want to be intimate with Jesus, he tells us how. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Our most intimate moment with Jesus is when we receive Jesus in Holy Communion. We receive Jesus into our very bodies. We could not be closer with Jesus. We are one. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. It reminds me of what we read in Genesis about man and woman becoming one in marriage. Remember that. When we receive Jesus in Holy Communion, we are no longer two but one. And we and Jesus are intimately united. Jesus gave himself for you on Calvary and gives himself for you again in Holy Communion. 
In today's gospel, we heard Jesus say, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. This is really the same as what Jesus will say later during the Last Supper. This is my body, which will be given for you. In today's passage, Jesus says, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And during the Last Supper, Jesus will say, this is my body, which will be given for you. It's so important, my beloved. Jesus gave up his body for you on Calvary. And gives up his body for you in every masses so that you may receive him in Holy Communion. It is the one sacrifice on Calvary extended through time to us at Mass. Some misunderstand and think Catholics say. Jesus is sacrificed again during every Mass. No. It is the one sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary which is extended through time to us in every Mass. And so truly Jesus can say to you, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. My beloved, in the gospel passage today, Jesus is really explaining what takes place during the Last Supper and every Mass. It is another take on the Last Supper, looking at the Last Supper from another angle so that we get a fuller understanding. But are we going too far in saying that bread really becomes the body of Jesus? Did Jesus intend us to understand that he was speaking only in symbols and metaphors and that we should not take him literally. Or did Jesus really intend us to understand that bread becomes the blood of Jesus and wine becomes the blood of Jesus? That transubstantiation takes place during the consecration at Mass. Those who were listening to Jesus knew he was not talking in symbols. They started arguing afterwards about what he had just said. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? It was clear to them that Jesus was talking about his flesh as bread, it would become clear for his listeners later that he really did mean that the bread of the Eucharist becomes his flesh. Why was there no room for confusion? My beloved, we have no idea how horrifying it would have been for Jewish listeners to hear him talking of consuming blood. Many times the Old Testament forbade consuming blood because life was in the blood. That's what Jewish been thinking of. In fact, if someone consumed blood, 
he was to be excommunicated from the Jewish people. For Jesus listeners to hear him talking of consuming blood, it would have been so horrifying that they could not make the mistake of thinking that he was talking only in symbols. Jesus is leading his listeners from the old covenant to the new covenant. In the old covenant, the supreme dwelling place of God on earth was in the temple in Jerusalem. But in the new covenant, God is with us in Jesus. Anytime we celebrate the Eucharist, and Jesus gives himself to us in the bread and wine, changed into his body and blood during Mass. In the Old Covenant, God fed his people with manna. When they were wandering in the desert, as we heard in our first reading, but in the new covenant, Jesus feed us with his own body and blood through his real presence in the Eucharist. My beloved, because of, of our faith, because our faith is weak, very weak sometimes, God sent us miracles to remind us that the Eucharist really is food and drink for our souls. And in the history of the church, a small number of people were given the grace to survive only on the Eucharist, eating no food except the Eucharist. First, blessed Alexandrina of Portugal lived only on the Eucharist during the last 13 years of her life. Only Eucharist. There's another lady which became holy, I believe. Martha Robin, in southeastern France, did not consume anything except the Eucharist from 1928 until her death in 1981. Can you believe this? No food, no drink, only Eucharist. My beloved, we want to meet Jesus. We want to have a closer friendship with Jesus. We want to have more of Jesus in our lives. We have to come to the right place. You come, we come to the Eucharist. The place, the best place to meet Jesus is in the Eucharist. Each time before we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we want to be as pure as possible. If you want to be intimate with Jesus, he tells us now, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Amen.